Well, hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing? Hi, fellas. I have a special read for you guys. I am inviting you to my house, right? So I'm going to do what is called the Eight of Cups, right? And you're coming to my house to have a sip with me, right? So welcome to my house, right? Where I'm going to do an Eight of Cups read for fellas. This is for fellas only, right? Fellas only. Welcome to my home, right? So, currently, there's a lot of sweet deals out there. It's definitely a lot of sweet deals out there. I'm not reading cards right now. This is just part of a lesson. So, um, I'm not... So, there, yeah, I'm, I'm not reading cards. I'm doing a quick lesson. So, there are a lot of sweet deals out there. But what you have to do is re weave through all of the fluff. You have to weave through all of the fluff. You cannot sit there and look at everything and understand that it is a sweet deal. Understand most sweet deals are scams. Understand most sweet deals get you in trouble. So, do not take any sweet deals at this current time, fellas. Right. And don't even do it. Um, okay. Um, there's a lot of, um, hidden things within these sweet deals that will get you locked up, trapped up with a chick that'll get you locked up or get you jammed up and get you killed. So what you want to do is, is stay away from these sweet deals because trust me, it's a lot of hidden within those sweet deals. It's a lot of Casanova stuff going on and women are becoming Casanovas, right? So what I want y'all to do is understand these women are trying to finesse you worse than you have ever finessed them. So watch yourself, watch your pockets, watch your bag. It's time to release all of that negative pressure that is around you. And a lot of the negative pressure around you comes from what? Females, right? So what you do is you put your females in your Pandora's box and you close it and put a lock on it, right? Give yourself a break. It is time, fellas, to give yourself a break from women. Take time and spend time being abstinent. Take three to six months to not have sex, fellas. That's what you need to do. You need to start clearing out your mind. I told you that once before. Stop having sex. You clear your mind. You start making some serious money, right? I told you all that fornication stops your money because God is not pleased with fornication, so he's not blessing you how you should be blessed, right? You go to work every day, but man, right? Your, your pockets ain't retaining no moolah because you all just spending it on the booty, right? Right, the duty booty, right? So don't do that, right? Right, 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 right. These chicks is out here to get your money and you spending it on them. God said, no, I can't bless you because I don't want you to waste your money on a woman that's not your wife, right? So, I'm not a sugar coater. I'm going to give you the truth. Right. And that's why you guys respect me. Because I'm not a sugar, sugar coater. I know your lingo. Lingo. Right. I know your lingo. And I'm not a sugar coater. So, right. Um, revisit your core to restore. Revisit your core to restore. Guys have been on my self-love tour as well. So, it, yeah, it's open for men. If you didn't understand that, it's open for males as well. So, come on in. Get that self-love tour as well. You see the videos. Go watch them. A lot of men have been involved. Um, revisit your core to restore. This is why I'm doing this quick lesson for guys who didn't know that the self-love tour was for fellas as well that are serious about changing. So revisit your core to restore. Go back to who you wanted to be, who you were as a youngin as well. Are you doing what you want to do now? Are you happy with what you're doing? If you have a job and you have a career, is it what you want to do when you were a child? Do you still want to do that? Right. Do you notice that you still have your childish ways, your childish behaviors? Uh, not saying your fun, hilarious, silly ways. I mean childish ways. Because a lot of men still retain their childish, high schoolish, boyish, 12-year-oldish, adolescent ways. There's a lot of stuff that grown men do that they used to do when they were 12, 13, 14, up to 18 years old still. And some of it's cool if you're single, but it's not cool if you're married. Right. So... Yeah, right. You got to get rid of some of those little childish boyish behaviors if you're going to be someone's husband. Because that gets on a grown woman's nerves. That little 12, 13-year-old stuff y'all guys love to do. Mm -mm. We women don't love to do it, right? We don't love to be tricked by our husbands because you're playing around and stuff like that. No. <laughs> right? Chill out with that. We ain't your buddy like that now. That ain't what the song meant. <laughs> you're taking too many gambles. Don't take gambles. Don't take chances. If you do want to take gambles and chances, take it on God. Pause and pray. Um, you will receive your just due if you do good you're going to receive good if you do bad you receive that we always receive our just due it's called karma if you're working hard and you're striving to do better and do be better connect with God 
Because if you're striving to do better, be better, and you connect with God, ooh, catapult. Right. Harvest time, is, right, you'll receive a harvest time. That's what I was just saying. Your harvest time will definitely come in for, hard, for, for your hard work. If you put in that hard work and you've been believing in not bad talking your own journey, that's another thing, fellas. Do not disrespect your own journey. journey. Don't talk bad about your own journey. Because when you start talking bad about your own journey, you don't have faith in yourself. You don't have, um, you don't believe in yourself. You must believe in yourself. You must have faith in yourself and in God in order to accomplish your task. You can't get 50% of the way and say, man, I ain't going to make it. Then you're not. You're not really cursed yourself. And you're cursing yourself. Nobody's cursing you. Nobody messing up your journey. You did it yourself just then by saying, man, I ain't going to make it. Uh, I rebuke what I just said in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to move forward and I'm going to be even stronger. Right. I'm going to finish my journey in Jesus' name, right? Thus said the Lord, right? That's what you got to say to, to to the atmosphere and to yourself. You got to remind yourself, nah, don't curse yourself. Bless yourself, right? Because when you say you ain't going to be able to do something, you ain't going to make it, you done cursed your own journey. Nobody else did but yourself, right? Take it back. Take it back. Rebuke it, right? In the name of Jesus to make sure that that, that negativity that you just spoke over yourself is gone, right? Right. So let nature flow. Let nature flow and a solid plan will develop. Right. A solid plan will develop, fellas. Fellas, you know where you want to go in life. You just have to learn to go with the flow. Stop trying to force everything. Right. You guys try to force your way to making it. No, don't force your way to make it. Learn how to go with the flow. But don't get too fluid. Right. Don't get too fluid. Right. Don't let the wave take you wherever it wants to take you. You Sometimes you do have to swim against it. Sometimes you do have to swim against the current. Right. But most of the time, you guys need to learn to go with the flow because you always are swimming against the current. The current is your journey. Sometimes it's nice and smooth and it take you. And other times it's, it's you, you know, you, you got to paddle with it. You got to. And sometimes you got to fight it. Right. Because there's externals and extremes in your life that you need to fight. Right. So that's why you're fighting against the current. Because there's externals and extremes in it you need to get rid of. But a lot of times you can just float and go with the flow. And then sometimes you got to put in the work. Because a little bit of current is coming. Right. A little bit of strength on that water is coming. Right. So we'll get into the cards now. These are all eight of cups. Right. Every last one of them except for one. Which the last card that I well I, ain't gonna, I don't know if it's gonna be the last card it probably will it's called the um it's a tomb card right so what's the tomb it's your end right but also on the flip side it's your beginning right so let's hit these eight of cups because it's already eight minutes <clears throat> right eight of cups right so welcome to my house your relationship with the heavenly father. It's something that definitely needs to be worked on. God always wants his kids to come to him first. God always wants his children in his life. God loves his children. God wants you to come and have time with him. Even if you don't believe in God, just talk and see what happens. If you do believe in God, reinstate your relationship with him because he wants you to. Never be embarrassed with God. Never think I can't never go back to God. God said, I'm not in the flesh. I'm not a human father or mother. Come and talk to me because I know what you are to anyway, right? I'm just waiting for you to say something to me. So God said, don't ever be ashamed or ever thinking that he'll turn you away. Unless you didn't already throw away your soul, right? But if you threw away your soul and you're ready to really take that journey with him, then he said, come have a talk with him. Otherwise, we ain't got nothing to discuss, right? But for those who, you know, don't know how God works, don't know who God is, or just need to be reinstated with God, do so. He's always there. I told you, he's scratching his nuts saying, what up? Be comfortable with me, right? For yourself, Eight of Cups, take your journeys. Get away from your externals, your extremes, leave them where they be. Take your journey. Pray with God. When you talk with God, right, our first cup, you will understand what your journey is, right? He will tell you what your journey is. You two can discuss a journey. You two can come in agreement with a journey because God doesn't just put you on a journey and tell you, you must. He includes you in it. What do you want to do? Right? What do you like? What do you love? 
Right. What are you interested in? Right. God knows because he put it within you. But which part do you want to start with? And God say, well, truthfully, we need to start with this part. Or, yeah, that's a good part to start with. Or, no, we'll have to incorporate that along the journey because everything within you will be incorporated along your journey. Right. Understand that. Everything you enjoy doing, everything you love, everything you hate will be incorporated <laughs> within your journey. Yes, it will. Right. Everything is part. Of, everything in your life is part of your journey. Right. Everything within life is part of your journey. What you hate, what you love, what you celebrate, what you just want to vacillate. Right. I, <laughs> right. It's all part of your journey. Right. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Right. Keep it moving. Right. So, Eight of Cups. Right. Your relationships with your family members are... They're great for the most part. Your relationships with your family is great. Right. They got your back. But with some people, you need to watch your back, right? So this is a double-edged sword. For some of you, you need to watch your back with your family and others. They have your back. You just have to know which part you are, which one you are. Do you have the support of your family or do you have to watch your back? You got to watch your back. Float, float on. Fly off, right? Float, float on. Go with the flow. Get away. That's when you start not floating. That's when you start paddling, right? Right. That's when you go against the current. When you have family that you have to watch your back with. Go, go out, get away. Bye. <laughs> right. Don't float. Don't don't go with the flow, right? Don't float, don't go with the flow. Right. Hit the curve. Go with it. Right. Hit it hard. Um, because family will what? Well I told you family is what's coming at you now to take you down. So watch your back, dear fellas, with your family. If you have to watch your back with them, get away from them, right? But if they are there as supporters, then right. Enjoy them. Love them. Teach them what you know about this self love tour, right? Get them prepared and ready, right? Right, help them to follow the correct path and get on their journeys. Right, because sometimes just watching a person makes another person want to get on their journey. Right, follow the right way, the right path. Correct. Eight of Cups. As far as your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, as far as educating yourself to do better in life, and jewels are falling from heaven. Right, people are gaining lots of knowledge. People are going back to the eighties when education was important. It is time to be educated right this is not the time to keep playing around being cute being beautiful this is the time to be educated so fellas education is a very important thing we love educated men i ain't gonna say educated black men i ain't gonna say educated men of color we love educated men period every color has to be in the workforce so every man needs to be educated so we love educated men so continue to get your jewels from heaven right your jewels from heaven are the word of god the jewels of heaven are your prayers that sent up that go up, right? Your jewels from heaven, your prayers that go up, right? And then God sends you a word back down. So you, um, he's telling all of you guys to go back to getting your edu education. Even if you start off with something small, even if you take one little class, even if you take a writing class, even if you go and take a gym class just to put yourself on a college campus, right? Do something. If you take a physical education class just to get yourself back on the campus, right? If you take a writing class, if you take an art class, you're on the campus. You're getting the feel. You're getting that beautiful, fresh, different educational air in your system. And trust me, every time I went back to school, when I went up to school, went back to school, I always got that fresh educational air within my lungs. And it gave me the strength and the motivation to move on and graduate. So trust me, you, you get a pep in your step. You get a new you when you begin to go to school. Trust me, education is very exciting. And when you get excited over education, oh man, you are a beast, right? Eight of Cups. When it comes to work, you guys are having some issues with work. You have women that are attached to you. That's why you're working so hard. Get rid of these women who want, 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 and ain't bringing at least half to the table. I'm sorry, if you're not married to a woman, she need to bring half to a table. If you are married to a woman, but she always won't. Then she need to bring half to the table. Because at the end of the day, you fellas are not dogs. You fellas are not here to take care of women who are well and able to take care of themselves. I still make money regardless of what my husband makes. You understand me? Well, regardless of what my husband supplies, I still want to have my own money. So I still make my own money. I do not ever want my husband to feel like I am take, 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 taking and never giving. Right. Because it doesn't matter how rich a man is and how much he gives to you. At some point, he feels like, is she with me for my money? If you're not bringing nothing to the table ever. If you don't ever offer anything to that man, 
and bring anything to that table no matter how much rich how rich he is and how much he gives you he will wonder at some point are you with him for his money or do you really have his back do you really love him if he lost everything would you be there because you ain't bringing nothing to the table right so fellas because i know women watching so fellas make sure you have a woman who at least brings half to the table if you're not married to her. And if she is one of them I always want, I always need, I always have to have the latest and greatest, make sure she bringing half to the table so her half can go on all her latest and greatest that she wants. And you just take care of the bills like you've been doing. A woman who wants the latest and greatest of everything, but she expects her husband to do it and she don't want to work, no, she got to go to work, bring half to that table, and the half that she brings, let her keep all of her money for her latest and greatest, and all you do is pay the bills like you're supposed to do as a husband. Right. Amen. Let her go to work for her goodies, and you pay all the bills. Right. There you go. Even exchange. Right. You ain't got to deal with her mess and her folly and all her hair and her, I need a car and all this, and I need Versace. No, nah, let her go to work so she can pay for that herself, and you just make sure all your bills are paid. Right. And give her some gas money if she go buy her own car. There you go. Give her some gas money. Now, <laughs> eight of cups. How is things going with you within your circles just period just outside in general right around you eight of cups um it's some hot spots it's some hot spots but i mean when you're dealing with just outside interferences outside excuse me when you're dealing with the outside the general public period of course there's going to be some hot spots because nobody everybody doesn't always get along all of us are not built to just, hey, get along with each other the minute we're in the same space with each other. So there's hot spots out there. Um, there's also people that you need to uh, uh, real fast, real quick with because the devil is busy. So you need to know who the devil is, understand who the devil is, and push the devil on out your face and out your way because the devil is busy, dear fellas, and they are attacking the men. The devil is definitely attacking the men in sexuality. That's the problem. The men, devil is attacking men in sexuality. So make sure those women are natural born women, right? I done told y'all, God said stop fornicating, and then you won't be coming across a stallion, right? You won't get hit by the wrong type of chick if you stop fornicating. Look for a wife, and trust me, you won't have all of these mishaps with these different women, and you won't be broke, your pockets won't be hurting, fellas, right? So this lesson here is called the transport. If you want to transport into your fruition, fruition, you got to deport these chicks about your life. You got to deport these homies who just sit in there asking and begging. You got to deport anything that is is it, causing you stress. This is how you know your meter. If it stresses you out, it got to go out, right? If it stresses you out, it got to get thrown out. If it stresses you out, blow it out. Put that fire out, right? So your um coffin card, your ending. Be aware, because the zombies around you, like I just said, get rid of them. It's zombies around you. It's people around you who are just, like, just there. They're in the way. They're there to cause hindrances. They're there to keep you with your eye unfocused, right? They're, trying, they're there to keep you unfocused. You're trying to look this way, but, right, when the zombie is wrong, what you doing? Looking? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. People keep trying to catch your eye, so they're trying to distract you. So the zombies are a bunch of distractions, right? These are people who are just a bunch of distractions who have nothing to offer your life. They're just there to distract you no matter what, right? Like I told my son, he was being a zombie the other day, walking up, running up and down the stairs while I'm recording. If you don't stop, because you're not getting anything. You, don't tell me you forgot something five times in a row. Now I'm about to slap you. I ain't going to slap my son, but I, I, I was ready to beat him down. But this is what I'm talking about. These are zombies, distractions. And these people, some of them don't even realize they're doing it. It's just the atmosphere that causes them to do it when you're doing something positive. Right? My son is not a negative person, but sometimes the atmosphere, you know, if you're not aware 100%, and plus, he's a teenager. He's a youngin. So, sometimes the atmosphere just has him doing things, right? You're <laughs> like, a teenager forgets to grab things. But, hello, I'm recording. You ran up and down that stairs five times. Cut it out. Go sit down somewhere. Right. And I know you hear me talk. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, this is what I'm talking about. These are the zombies, the distractions, right? The things that sometimes people aren't aware that they're doing certain things, right? But, at other times, they are aware because they're doing it on purpose. My son was not aware that he was doing it, right? He does, for, he, he does forget to grab stuff, right? And plus, he was doing other things. But instead of taking care of everything at once, he was running up and down the stairs. Cut it out. And I hate that to begin with. And he does it on a regular basis anyway. Not even when I'm just recording. He just runs up and down the stairs, right? So, with that being said, it, um, 
keep these zombies out your life, these distractions, because they are there. They are there. They are most definitely there. They are hard and heavy. They are the number 10. They are there hard and heavy. Well, the fortune, right. They are there to play games with you. Well, the fortune, right. What you got to do, protect yourself. What you got to do, you trying to win the game, will the fortune. You trying to win the game, will the fortune. They trying to distract you, will the fortune, right. You the one who want to win. Get these zombies and tell them to screw, screw, get up out of my life. So transport, right. Remove yourself. Eight of cups. Get up out of these situations. Walk away from them and don't be sad about them and don't look back at them because you will be a pillar of salt if you salt if you mess with these people. All right, you have a great one. See you later, fellas. Welcome to my home and thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Bye bye.